nerd soul. All right. So um, we're doing what we're doing in the service of allowing folks to get to know our community, uh, to, to become more familiar with the stories that we tell and the way that we go about them. And so I was kicking around ideas. There he is. Was kicking around <laughs> ideas. Speaking of um, of being younger and like you know like campfire stories and kind of having story time, and instead of kind of the hustle around the elevator pitch that a lot of us have become committed to, right? The the very quick execution of what the the meat and bones of a story is about to try to sell it to a producer or somebody to put it out into the world. I thought it was cool to kind of take the stories that we tell and tell them in that kind of old school, direct to the audience way, like you were telling a story. And so I figured uh, a good opportunity to do that and a good way to start um, this kind of a segment off would be somebody who, as, as was stated in the last segment, has a foot in, in both sides of the street. Uh, this is a cat who is very well known for his work at, at both Marvel and DC. He's worked with some of the biggest and brightest names. He's literally created canonized characters with people who have already brought you canonized characters. His resume in terms of professional work is extensive and long. But the way I came across him was looking at covers for Super Justice Force or looking at the viral web clip of the number 13. It was getting in contact with badass mofo that led me to David F. Walker. So this gentleman in league and, and, and other writers have come together to build what we call Bitter Root. And we want to the, the opportunity to come in as one of the creators of that story and take a little time to tell the audience. A lot of us as comic book fans have probably immediately gone to the store off the strength of his name and copied where those of us that come from some of the communities in which the characters were developed might have already gravitated because we had some familiarity. But if you're a stranger off the street or never had the opportunity to become connected with this world or this universe, I'd like to offer the opportunity to present Mr. David F. Walker and talk to you and tell you the story of Bitter Root. Uh, <laughs> oh, where yeah. was that, 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 that was nice. And, that was and you know beautiful, what? Beautiful, man. That, that was amazing. I thank you. And I'm we we, over we got we got the team for Bitter Root at the door. So you guys are, <laughs> you, you guys in. you guys are in yo y'all in for a treat like like for real like psh, we got it. They here. So hey. welcome David Walker, Sanford Green. What's up guys? You can see me, right? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Clean right now, man. I like that. I like what you got going on. Salute. Yeah. Salute, sir. You got a dangerous hand on your arm, man. You got a dangerous hand on your arm. <laughs> he looks like Kimbo Slice. <laughs> I don't want to box him neither. I don't want right. a drawing contest or a boxing match. No day. No day. No day. None of them, man. None of them. Right. <laughs> What's up, guys? Man, y'all looking real nice. Real good looking black people going on right now. Yeah, I like it. Hey, man, we, 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 we appreciate it, man. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, this timing couldn't be more uh, on point, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I just want to say not only thank you for doing this, but thank you for having us on. Um, yeah. I, I definitely needed this today, you know? Yeah. It was, uh, it was do laundry and watch the news, and I don't want to do either. So, you know, this is it. <laughs> this, yeah. is it y'all are, um, this is like a healing circle or something. So thank you. Thank you. Man, what up, what up? Uh, so, uh, uh, with that said, uh, you guys do a book, a, a little book, that little people, you know, a little, a little something <laughs> people might like just a little bit <laughs> called Bitter Root. And we wanted you guys to come on and tell us the story of how Bitter Root came to be. Um, so whenever either of you are, you know, ready, take it away. If y'all want to jump off each other, feel free. Well, uh, well, Chuck isn't here. Chuck is the, the other third of the team. Mm -hmm. um, Sanford and I were, were working at Marvel on Power Man and Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were having a lot of fun doing it, but apparently our sales weren't what they needed to be. So Marvel decided that it was time to, uh, to put an end to it, which is, you know, 
no hard feelings. It was, it was a great run and I had a lot of fun on that book. Um, so as soon as Power Man and Iron Fist was canceled, uh, and Sanford can elaborate on this a little bit, Eric Stevenson from Image reached out to Sanford and said, you know, what do you got going? And, and at that point, him and Chuck had, um, they'd been talking about Bitter Root, but it was, it was kind of like a lot of projects in comics where you're talking about it, but you got 500 other things, you know, taking up your attention. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Sanford reached out to me and asked if I wanted to get involved in, in the project. And at this point, it was, uh, it was still early enough along that I didn't feel like too much of an asshole for, for coming on board and being a bully. Cause that's what I am. I'm very difficult to work with. So uh, Sanford, I'll let you elaborate a little bit. I digress. <laughs> um, I think, yeah. Go ahead, man. No, I was going to say um, you collaborate uh, quite a bit with Chuck, right? Like y'all have done things before. Well, yeah, we, we, we haven't done um, a ton of things together, but I've known him for a long time. And uh, he, he's been one of those, those guys that um, has some, some great ideas, but never really the platform or the opportunity to do, um, to get those ideas out there. So um, we, we did a few things just to try to get his feet, you know, in, in the door. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this idea that he had about this family, cause he's kind of the, the spark, of the whole thing. Um, Mm -hmm. He wanted to do something during that time period, the Harlem Renaissance time period. Um, Nothing was fleshed out at all. It was just a, you know, he just kind of threw that idea out there. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I, I listened to a lot of things that he he talks about, but for some reason that just kind of really stuck out to me. And um, like David just shared, um, we were coming off of, working on Power Man Iron Fist, I like the diplomatic approach that he took to that whole thing. I got other opinions about it, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think I think this whole, you know, this situation right now that's happening in our country has got me seeing things a, a wide open right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, I think the thing, um, and, and, and I don't want to put any seeds out there much anyway, that mm-hmm. this was some kind of race thing or whatever, but it it does show that we as creators, you know, me and David, we were in a, a pool of creators that weren't like us. Right. right. You know, there were very few there right. and uh, it was an honor to, to make it there. But we, I think at that moment, that's when I saw, you know, our stories and, not, and our ideas weren't necessarily going to be championed the way that we see it mm-hmm. because we don't have anyone necessarily um, in, in, in the, the powers that be, if you will, that would champion that. Right. Uh, and that's not the, you know, that, that's, that's a whole nother story. Mm-hmm. Right. But we, we knew that, you know, in order to tell the kind of stories that we feel like we need to share that would, um, that would make a difference for us, um, we needed to start looking to uh, do our own thing. So in a, in a weird right. kind of way, Power Man and Iron Fist ending was a blessing. Because It, it really was. Yeah. Uh, not, to cut, not to cut Sanford off. And, and I'm sure he has this a lot where I, I hear from people on social media, oh, I want you to come back to Power Man and Iron Fist, or I want you to revisit Nighthawk. I want you to do this, that, the other again. And, and it's all, you know, it's all work for higher stuff. And, and I appreciate that support. Um, but it doesn't feel as good as Bitterroot feels, you know, and, and it's not as personal as what we're doing. It's not as personal as what, what y'all are doing, you know, Jason mm-hmm. and Quinn and all the other, the folks that were on in the earlier panel. And, you know, it's, it's difficult for me to even have any ill feelings towards Marvel or anyone over the Power Man and Iron Fist situation because um, it was fun. I had an right. opportunity, something I wanted to do since I was a kid, mm-hmm. and it led to this other thing which is right. You know, right. This is us. You know what I'm saying? Even though right. we may yell at each other, which we do, you know, I'm always yelling at Sanford and Chuck and then they start crying. And then our editor <laughs> has to call me up and say, I've seen such a bully. And I'm like, 
<laughs> I thought this was going to be a, a, a more uplifting, but, you know, like, <laughs> as he does, he, he finds a way to twist it and make it as negative as possible. Well, I, I think, I think, I think Qu you're Quinn knows, though, because he's working with me, too. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's 12 years with David. It's kind of 12, 12 years with David. You work, you work, with, yeah. you work with David. Uh, you said you work with them. You're working with them now. We're working together. Yeah, we're doing a thing called discombobulated, and then this other thing we're working on together. Oh yeah, 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 wow. yeah. God bless you, brother. I, I, I'm hanging in there, man. I'm trying to make. It. I'm trying to make it. I, hey, man, I do, it, it takes a I village. Do, I cry in the shower a lot. Is what I do. Quinn, it takes a village. It takes a village, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a village. I, I'm but, glad I got somebody. Reeves is Reeves is thinking. Yeah. I gotta just. I'm not gonna answer the phone when he calls anymore. <laughs> Dodging bullets over here, like. <laughs> <laughs> Matrix time. So yeah, I, I, I did want to. I did want to just touch on this uh, before because I, I also want y'all to be able to kind of tell the story of the story itself, so that people can really get familiar with it. But before we get to that, I did want to touch on one of the things that that personally I think is valuable about what y'all did uh, with Power Man and Iron Fist, and, and by extension you guys being in the game and I, and I've been talking to people because of course I'm doing my own thing. I'm an indie guy and I'm trying to sell my product. Right. And I have a guy that flies that has a cape to be quite frank with you. He has a letter on his chest there. We, we can get into that. Right. But he can't punch the Joker in Ken. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's a, the, the, the thing that some of the, uh, some of our audience is looking for is representation in these spaces that are the largest houses of storytelling in the world. So right. when y'all are over there, we need that. We value that because you're our advocate. You're the you're the quality check and balance to make sure that he's just the guy's not just walking in the room going, "What's on? What's going on, soul brother?" And you're drawing him in a way to where he looks like he's being represented, so that it feels like us. So we right. need that. But what makes this better is everything that y'all see, right? So like it's it's that I'm not trying to say it's it's all sides, but I do want to show that that we respect the the value that y'all create when y'all work in those idea houses. I know it's fulfilling the dream and it's y'all getting to do the thing that y'all wanted to do, but y'all are also you're fulfilling that for other kids and people that are reading the stories Ooh. about too. So I just want to you're you're you. opening a door, right? Right, absolutely. And is is creating something for somebody else down the line to come in and do that yeah. exact same thing. Right. You know? Here, here's the thing that's so that's everything that you guys are talking about. Um, we did a bit of uh, research. Well, it was not even a whole lot of effort in this, but <laughs> we we kind of just examined and, and took notice that you know the last creative team, all creative team of uh, color. Mm. Um, at least on this level at Image was about 20 plus years ago. Wow. Tribe? I knew it. There you go. Yeah. And you know, the thing, the thing about that that made that so sobering for us was even Tribe wasn't long lasting there. Mm -hmm. So right. to some degree, what we're doing is the first Mm -hmm. You know, Ooh. this image is the third largest publisher, um, arguably the best in mm -hmm. terms of uh, content and, mm -hmm. and variety. Mm -hmm. And yet what we're doing is one of the first things that's been done there. Um, and so, yeah, we do feel like we're kind of the, the vanguard. <laughs> vanguard yeah. Still, you know? I, I ne never considered it. I never considered it, but that's actually... That's actually, yeah, that's that tracks. Right. Um, you guys, and and then I think behind you is is Thomas and and Kyrie. Right. Yeah, doing yeah they got their excellence, excellence, which mm -hmm. is a dope book, by the way. That book is so and dope. Shout out to I Kyrie love it. Randolph, who has the best Twitter bio on the internet because he has black <laughs> and then excellent in his bio. Right. That's right. Nah, it, that's it's interesting. It's interesting. Bio. It is. <laughs> It is sobering that in the indie, like the company that that is like outwardly the indie company, mm -hmm. in twenty years hasn't had uh, uh, two black teams 
uh, making comics. Yeah, I hadn't even considered it, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's crazy. I mean, that, yeah. and we, we, I mean, I dare to say we're, we're, you know, we're the first because it's three of us. Right. So yeah, it's, absolutely. You know, we, we were trying to be very intentional. I mean, at the very beginning of this, even our intention was to, to create that narrative that look, <clears throat> there's a lot more awesome creators out there of color who aren't just, um, um, you know, indie, quote unquote, indie um, mm -hmm. creators. We can be on a certain level with all of the, the major players, if you will, the sagas right. of the world and, and, and things of that nature in that, on that platform. Um, and we wanted to try to hit and highlight each uh, creative level. You got yeah. the writers of color. We've got, you know, uh, obviously artists, but we wanted to go even further than that. I mean, we we were looking and we 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 had a few that we wanted to put behind the scenes with the editorial side, but we we took this a similar step in a way because we we got female editors. Our first mm -hmm. editor was um oh gosh. Heather, Heather Antos. Yeah, with Heather Antos. And she was right. brilliant. And now we have Shelly Bond who is one of the foundations of Vertigo, you know. It's diabolical. Yeah, she, she <laughs> yeah, she she's definitely what we needed to to keep to keep David in check. So you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're good. We're good. We're good, you know, in allowing, you know, just having, you know, um this platform. Um and even when we did uh the, our first our first arc one of the things we wanted to do, what what I thought was really important, was highlight, um, which is an even more niche, you know, um, demographic, is female artists of color. Uh, right. So we started highlighting a lot of these uh, incredible illustrators, you know, Fool Richardson and um, Ashley and, Woods, and, and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you know uh, Natasha Buchos, who's you know Moon Girl, Devil, Dinosaur. She's yeah. You know, so yeah, we we you know, and we discovered some new talent in in the midst of that. You know, um, um, my my girl uh, Sozo. She she's she's man. She she should be a cover artist on a major book oh, yeah. easily, easily. You know, but um, that that that's part of the. Um, I guess the, the the privilege, if you want to call it that, of having this platform because it does allow us that 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 leverage to be able to not only um, highlight and create these avenues for um, possible other titles, but just even in a small scale, just highlight you know whether do uh, whether we do a cover or short stories to highlight these other creators. Right. Whose idea was it to get Jennings to do the write-ups in the back? Because that was brilliant. But... Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take credit for it, but I will. Um, <laughs> no, I, I had said to, um, I said to Sanford and Chuck, I said, you know, I really think we got to do something special with the back of the book. I was really heavily inspired by what um, Kelly Sue DeConnick and, and Valentine were doing in Bitch Planet. And I, I felt that there was an opportunity there to not only expand the scope of what we were doing in the book, but to um, to, to just help educate people. You know, it, it's like not everybody knows what the Harlem Renaissance is. Not everybody, right. you know, before Watchmen came on, most people didn't know about, um, you know, the, the bombing of, of, of Tulsa. And good point, so good point. I felt like right. we are in this very privileged spot. I never, I try to never lose sight of that. And, and I know that Chuck and Sanford don't lose sight of that either. So, um, and, and Jennings is just someone who is to me is a rock star, you know, on every level. I was just, just on the phone with him yesterday, you know, a dear friend and someone who inspires me quite a bit and, and was just, you know, begged him because, because he's like the, the hardest working man. He, he is like period in common. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, so yeah, it, it to me, honestly, I love Bitterroot. I love all the work that we're doing, but the back of the book is the thing that I feel most proud of um, because it's the. I think it's because I can look at it so objectively, you know, as opposed to when I look at what we do as a team, Chuck Sanford and I. Um, I get I get too hypercritical, but the back of the book I can just let it be. Mm. Mm. 
I can share okay, something okay. With, 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 with Jennings is that um, I think it, it wasn't a hard sell at all. It, it was literally, I think David and, and, and John, they had those conversations, but, but before it even was materialized, he was already like, man, if, if the fact that you guys are doing something independent, creator own, let me know what I what I can do. How can I be a part of it? You know, right. these are the, the, you know those casual conversations that we had, and then <clears throat> when they they uh, started to uh, form the uh, back matter, it was like, yeah, this is a whole nother level. This is now we're talking about literally something that has never been done in in comics. Period. That I know right. of. I mean, maybe on an independent uh, level from 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 a, uh, another standpoint, but. Mm -hmm. Nothing, definitely an image um, has ever been done like this. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, uh, a, I think a game changer for sure. And, and I think oh. it's also important to point out that all of us, Chuck, Sanford, myself, and, and but John especially, we also work in education. And, right. and so we don't lose sight of that. There's the nerd side of us. We're all hardcore nerds. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yep. Chuck is probably the nerdiest of us. Um, <laughs> But we're also, you know, we also teach and work in, work in education. And, and to me, um, and this is sort of how I was raised, that, that there's also a level of responsibility um, recognizing the position that we were about to enter into uh, at Image. And I think that and what, what I want to point out is that, um, you know, I, Quinn and Jason, especially because I've done several shows where Jason's been in attendance and, and, and Sebastian, who was on the earlier panel, Man, there's some cats out there that are holding it down in a way that a lot of us don't truly understand and comprehend. But I can say for a fact, emphatically, that like Sebastian and Stranger Comics, they're moving more units than some publishers that y'all have heard of. Yeah. Um, oh, and wow. because, just because Diamond isn't you know tracking the numbers that way. Right. Uh, but I have literally worked on books for publishers where we sold a thousand units, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and the threshold can be really low. And, right. But if you're, if, if they're not, it's, it, it's like with COVID right now, like they ain't counting all the people that are dying of COVID because they don't right. want to go up too high. Right. Um, right. And, and you can get, you can go to a convention on a good weekend and and you can move more units of a self-published title that's owned by a black publishing company and a black creative team, and you yep. can outsell some of the stuff that that you're seeing on your shelves. The, the shelves at a comic book store is a very limited amount of real estate. Mm -hmm. And and I and the thing that worries me a lot, and Sanford and I have talked a little bit about this. Quinn and I have talked, and Jason and I have talked about this too, is in the immediate future, the lack of conventions, how is that going to impact us? Because part of how Sanford and I individually got to where we were is mm -hmm. that hustle at the convention, right? I, I met Sanford like 20 years ago at conventions and was always like, hey, man, let's do some work together. And he would just like roll his eyes like, yeah, who are you? you know? <laughs> I, still, I still do that, but hey. Um, must have changed. But, but there's, there is no substitute for that. Right. But we can yeah. build something different. And I think like this rent party is, is the beginning of it. You know, this is like the dopest thing. So. This is the dopest thing I've seen in, in since this this nuttiness is pandemic nuttiness has started, man. And it's, it's really an honor thank you. to be part of it. You Why? Know? Thank you. We, we, <laughs> we try to make it happen. Oh, no, I, I, I agree. I was going to like, real quick. Yeah. I want I wanted to uh, I guess yeah. I can wax you guys car a little more. But uh <laughs> I think the thing that what you guys are doing right now, again, because it's so timely, like look at the platform that you have, because this is a, a platform that people are going to need, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, hey, let's talk about, you know, some cool projects. This thing can expand to some, some, you know, social, you know, uh, you know, opportunities for you guys too, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hope so. I mean, I hope that the synergy, like it, the, the idea is to build a bridge between that personal interaction we were talking about last panel yeah. uh, and that we're talking about here 
and virtual, like kind of combine those two worlds and make it so that we're, you know, like in the event that we can't get face to face and we can't get out, that we can do this kind of stuff. And it's still personable, right? So, right. yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Absolutely. So, so just real quickly for those who may not be familiar, uh, not an elevator pitch, but just real quickly, whoever wants to tackle it, tell me what Bitter Root is about and then just tell us where we could get it. Well, you want me to do that, Sanford? Um, knock yourself out, man. <laughs> say, I draw the pictures. Hey, I tell, you, you know, I tell people. Well, basically, if I if I can share this, yeah. I said if you love if you love Hellboy and BPRD, put a lot of black people in it. <laughs> there you go. That's basically, it. It's uh, uh, Bitter Root is about a family. It takes place during the Harlem Renaissance, and it's about a family of monster hunters. The family itself, um, it should go without saying, but they're they're a black family, um, they are sort of torn between how to deal with the monsters. Do you cure them or do you kill them? And the, here's right. the key. Up until now, the monsters are all white people who have been infected by a disease that comes from hate and racism. Right. Right. And, and so again, do you try to cure people of this disease or you, do you just try to destroy them? And now, as, as we enter the story, what we're seeing is that there's a new breed of monster that's come. And that breed of monster are, are black folks who mm. have been uh, so traumatized by grief and suffering and fear that they themselves become monsters. So we've taken these extreme emotions that people have and we've manifest that into a, a, a monstrous being. And then the question becomes, how do you fix that? How do you solve that? And, and as ter in terms of Black folks, is it the responsibility of Black folks to cure that monster? Okay. Mm. Is it, is, and I'm talking specifically about the monster of hate, the monster of racism. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, then, but then what happens if in your struggle to fight that monster, you become your own kind of monster? And, and you know, it's, we're, in some ways we're seeing this play out right now like live we could we could flip over to whatever you want to watch cnn msnbc fox we'd be seeing this and and for for me anyway i don't, I don't want to speak for sanford or, or chuck mm -hmm. um it's been very difficult to write this book the last really the last few months but the last three four days has just been the hardest thing of all um right. because i don't want i don't want to put all of my anger and frustration into the book because then no one would ever read it. No one, even the angriest cats out there would be like, Oh, wait a minute. This is too much. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's like when you're watching black Panther, you're like, Killmonger's got it right. Killmonger's got it right. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. He just went too far. He used to make it. I, I feel you. Like, I feel like sometimes it's hard to keep the rage from overtaking the creativity. Yeah. Like, you you get so pent up and especially like in situations like this like that's what's going on you know outside our doors and you try to write or you try to even draw and it's like it it, it, it it's almost like you, you can't turn it off yeah you, you know? you're and, not typing on the computer you're punching you're like, uh, exactly uh, exactly <laughs> exactly wow. you know I'm breaking think, the and, points and, stuff. and i think no, about I was, it like I was this gonna, yes sir yes sir no, I was gonna. I was gonna share. I I kind of see it a little differently. Mm -hmm. I think that's when you can be your your honest, your most honest, and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be on the page. Like it has to be the final thing. But put it down. Put it down if it's if it's the most ugly, downright hardcore thing that you you're feeling. Mm -hmm. you're, you're you're. It's kind of a cathartic. Right. You know, in a way to, to just get it out, right? When we, sometimes I think we, we, we apologize a little too much. Mm. What are we apologizing for? For being, a, we're, we're apologizing for being a victim, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I don't want to get on a soapbox right now. This is more yeah. David's thing, but. <laughs> they're, they're, nah, they're, man, nah, talk your talk, brother. I talk, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, 
I think for for a while, um, you know, again, and this comes from this comes from I think what I, at least for me, what I've learned working in this industry, I've been fortunate to be, you know, working on the top level things, you know, at the top level company, but there's still that fine line that you have to dance in order to stay there, right? Mm -hmm. And, and that and that's a that's a that's a hard thing <clears throat> and you feel kind of in a weird way you feel out of place I mean I, I'm pretty sure me and David had these conversations you know you, you feel like am I really a part of this thing you know am I really are you really with me on this you know is this you, you know is this hundred percent and then you know when when the wheels fall off and it's like there's no one else around you're like oh well I guess that's what it was. So yeah. you 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 did all this work, and you still are kind of like left you on know, the outside of outside it. Outside of right. it. Yeah. So yeah. you're kind of like, all right, well, obviously, you know, that way is not going to keep me in the house. <laughs> right. So you might it's, as well just keep yourself, you know. It, 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 you think what? And and, it, and I'll say this, and I'll and I'll, I'll stop. Hmm. I, what we're doing right now is honestly the most gratifying, but it's also been the most, like we all have aspirations of making it and being successful and people enjoying our work, right? Absolutely. Right. We, at least for me and David, I think we, we felt like if we had, if we'd done the Marvel thing, that would be it. That would be where you're going to get the masses and, and everything. Mm -hmm. But we've gotten more of that doing this yeah. than we ever did doing what we were doing, um, you know, with the, uh, with the other companies. Now, mind you, I, w I will say that definitely played a part. Mm -hmm. But I think we're telling our story. We're telling it from our experience and it's connecting and it's connecting with people that we didn't even expect would, it would connect with. And I think because it, it because it is honest, it is from a genuine place. So, you know, just, you know, do, do your thing and yeah. it will connect with people for sure. Man. I'm, I'm pleased I, to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was just going to say um, that what, what, what y'all are doing and, 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 you know, like you guys are, are further y'all from a lot of us who are looking up to y'all. And so this is the kind of community that we're we'll able to build to know that it's, people like you guys that are ahead that we can look up to. And I just want to say thank y'all for in the book and yes. out in the world helping us fight these monsters, man. Yes, yes, Maybe yes, yes. Stanford Green, Bitterroot, please tell us where we can pick it up, where we can get it. Well, uh, you at your local comic shop, you just got to tell uh, whoever runs your comic shop and orders everything that you want. Bitter root. You want them to pull it and 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 to pre-order it for you. Uh, issue number eight comes out in the middle of June, I think, or around June 10th. So it's pretty soon. Um, digitally, you can get it on Comixology. Um, you can also get it uh, through Amazon. Amazon Comixology, they're the same thing. Um, and 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 the, the thing that's really crucial is you know um, spread the word. If you're already a fan, yes. you know, yes, yes, yes. People, definitely. Uh, and and and. And remember that, that this community, we all know enough of each other that we can build this community. We can make it stronger. And it doesn't even have to be, about, we can still all do our own thing. We're all tied in this together. You know, um, that last panel that y'all did, like I know almost everybody on that panel. I don't know everybody, but I know enough. And it's like, oh, there's some more people I want to work with. There you go. Sanford is plugging it. Um, that's right. There it is. That's it. Oh, uh, there you go. There you that's go. It. That's it. You got it. your comps. I ain't got my comps yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. You got to make a phone call. That's a vision's cover. That, that's oh, Chris boy. Vision, right? That is so yeah, dope. Uh, probably the, the, the most requested cover right now, uh, okay. you know, as far as uh, the orders <laughs> for fans. Is this uh, up, purple paint uh, cover by Chris Visions, who's uh, another super talented uh artist uh brother up there in uh virginia uh, okay shouts right, to be well, two up two down yeah there it is, <laughs> it is. so <laughs> i just i know you guys gotta wrap it up i just want to say thank you for having us on 
and and to anybody who's listening, you know, um, just you know, be healthy, stay healthy, stay safe, and 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 you know, we got to work together. I can't say anything better than what Killer Mike said last night. So you know, if if you haven't seen what he said in in Atlanta, watch that Killer Mike video. That's it. Um, All right. Quinn and Reeves, I'm gonna be calling both of you real soon because I got stuff. On you. And and Sanford, I will get you the rest of the script next week. I promise. <laughs> Chuck, if you're watching, just stop cussing at me. All right. Yeah. And I yeah. love everybody. Sure that's guys, the David Walker support group will be this next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you, what up? What What we need to do? I hope this is all being recorded. It should be. <laughs> there it is. So so documented. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. with, uh, with that said, I wanted to throw to the chat real quick. Uh, big shout out to Task Animated Series, to uh, White Guardian Studios, to uh, Milton Davis, all for hollering at us in the super chat. Thank you, thank you. You know, every drop in the bucket helps uh, to go on and support the Rent Party, of course. We thank the team for Bitter Root for coming through, dropping them gems on us. Guys, this ain't it. We got Mo coming your way. Stick around. We got a break full of dope people coming. Man, come on. Y'all seen some of the breaks already? So guys, y'all know what it is. Check out the break. Grab a drink. Come on back through and we'll see y'all in a second. But until then, y'all chill. We y'all see y'all in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yo, that was that was hilarious, yo. Yo, uh, yo, a trip. Man.